Good evening, this is Matt Bautista, and welcome to our first Wednesday Bible study here in Faith Baptist Church South Metro for the year 2021. And before we proceed with our study, let us first go to the Lord in prayer to seek wisdom and guidance. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to once again hear from your word. Thank you, Lord, for sustaining us throughout the past year and teaching us from your word. Father, I pray that at this time you would grant us wisdom and understanding. May you, be, may you be the one to lead us, Lord, as we hear and learn from your word. May you bless our time together in Jesus' name. Amen. So, tonight, um, you may have already seen uh, the title of our message. So, before we proceed any further, I would like to just clarify you know, this is not necessarily um, a lesson to question uh, the grace of God because the title um, might um, imply because there was God's grace plenty in 2020. So it's not questioning the grace of God nor the um, sovereignty of God. Uh, and I'm not even um, trying to criticize our own theme in church. But um, this lesson um, is something to help us understand the wondrous grace of God from another perspective. Okay, so I would just like to clear that out of the way so that we can all focus. Yeah, I know that you understand. It's just that uh, for me, I would like to uh, be sure about it. Okay, so let us proceed. Was God's grace plenty in 2020? So let's see. The whole world looked forward to year 2020. Everyone did. Believers, unbelievers alike. Who could blame us? Well, there were some ups and downs along the way. The majority of it was still somehow leaning towards the better. We did have a lot of good things to expect. But then, COVID-19 happened. No one expected it, nor the damage it would cause all over the world, physically, mentally, emotionally, or economically, all of those things. Now, to add to it all, the Philippines even suffered a volcano eruption right at the beginning of the year and super typhoons towards the end. So, it's, it was really bad. Like, uh, just to put more icing on the cake, all of those still happened. Now, I know other countries probably faced tragedies of their own. So, but um, I'm more familiar with um, what we experienced here in the Philippines. So, the question is, was God's grace plenty or... Was it just enough in 2020 to make sure that uh, we didn't die out that year? Now, a similar instance is found in the Old Testament account of God's people. Not necessarily a global pandemic, but uh, a similar uh, instance in terms of um, how believers um, uh, saw something good and then had a bad experience right after. Now, the people of God, they have been delivered by God from bondage and were expectant of greater things to come. But like us, they received an unexpected slap on the face shortly after celebrating the wonderful things that have come their way and the things that they are looking forward to. Let's go to Exodus chapter 15, verses 1 to 27. Now, I know this is a long passage, so... Please bear with me, but this is very interesting to read. Let's go. Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord, singing. Now, this was the time when God just delivered them from Pharaoh and his army. They just um, crossed the Red Sea, and this is what happened next. They were singing, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. The, Lord's, the Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has thrown into the sea. His chosen captains are drowned in the Red Sea. Now they're uh, recounting uh, what the Lord did for them in a song to remind them about the grace of the Lord. Now the deep water covers them. Clad in armor, they sank to the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrow and annihilate those adversaries who rise in rebellion against you. You send out your fury, and it consumes them like chaff. 
With the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The flowing water stood up like a mound. The deeps were congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My desire shall be satisfied against them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall dispossess them and drive them out. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them. Clad in armor, they sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you among the gods, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, working wonders? You stretched out your right hand, the sea swallowed them. You in your loving kindness and goodness have led the people whom you have redeemed. In your strength, you have guided them with care to your holy habitation. The peoples have heard about you. They tremble. Anguish and fear has gripped the inhabitants of Philistia. Then the tribal chiefs of Edom were dismayed and horrified. The mighty leaders of Moab trembling grips them. All the inhabitants of Canaan have melted away in despair. Terror and dread fall on them because of the greatness of your arm. They are as still as a stone. They are petrified until your people pass by and into Canaan, O Lord, until the people pass by whom you have purchased. You will bring them into the land of promise and plant them on the mountain, Mount Moriah in Jerusalem, of your inheritance, the place, O Lord, you have made for your dwelling among them, the sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord shall reign to eternity and beyond. For the horses of Pharaoh went with his war chariots and his charioteers into the sea, and the Lord brought back the waters of sea on them. But the sons of Israel walked on dry land in the middle of the sea. Then Miriam and Miriam the, prophetess, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron and Moses, took a timbrel in her hand, some, uh, something like um, a tambourine, and all the women followed with her timbrels and dancing. And Miriam answered them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously and is highly exalted. The horses and its rider he has hurled into the sea. Now imagine they were just singing. And then Miriam and the other women, they even had tambourines. They were just and then singing. I don't know uh, what tune the, these words were sung into, but uh, they were just celebrating. They were having a good time. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went a distance of three days, about 30 miles, in the wilderness and found no water. Then they came to Mara, but they could not drink it, its waters because they were bitter. Therefore, it was named Mara. The people grew discontented and grumbled at Moses, saying, What are we going to drink? Now, just moments ago, or as we have read, maybe just a few days earlier, they were still singing and celebrating, recalling the grace of God and His mighty works. But then, they found no water and started to complain at Moses. So what can we learn in this incident? Do you see the similarity with us last year? No, everyone was just so expectant. All of us had this um, vision of greater things. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. Again, as I have said earlier, who could have blamed us? And it's not, there's nothing wrong in expecting great things. And we are to expect great things from the Lord. But it's just that. The Lord also sends us testing along the way. And as we will see, we will find out that God's grace works differently in our lives. Let us note a few things, some principles that we can learn about the grace of God. Number one, good things today are not an assurance of good things tomorrow. It's the same with the children of Israel. You know, they were just, um, they just got from a victory a very astounding victory from the Lord. And then, after that, of course, they were just looking forward to greater things, but something happened. And that's just part of the realities of life that we have to face. You know, good things today are not an assurance of great things or good things tomorrow. And now, I'm not saying that um, good things cannot lead 
to better things or to other good things in life. No, that, that, that happens. But um, what I'm saying, what I'm trying to emphasize here is that it's not an assurance because many things can come our way. Letter A, one good event doesn't necessarily lead, necessarily lead to a better one. Again, I'm not saying that it couldn't, but it doesn't necessarily always happen that way. As we have seen in the lives of the children of Israel, if it could happen to God's own people, why can't it happen to us, to everyone else in the world? And let her be, there will always be trouble in this world. In John 16 verse 33, it says there, these things, this is Jesus speaking, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. It's interesting that um, Jesus first said that, you know what, I'm telling you this, but uh, you have peace in me, okay? But you know what, in this world, there will be trouble. There will be tribulation. And uh, I actually first heard this statement from uh, Pastor Eric Santos, uh, our Deputy Director in School of Tomorrow Philippines and the uh, pastor of their church in Jesus' flock. Uh, he said that this is also one of the promises in the Bible, you know, because we're just too used to claiming the good promises, the promises that um, would benefit us. But Jesus said this and it's actually also a promise that in this world there will be trouble. But uh, again, uh, this is not necessarily part of uh, uh, what I intended. But let's just read it. To, uh, let's just continue the, the verse. It's, but Jesus also said, But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. But the fact that there will always be trouble is there. And let us see. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Again, this is Jesus speaking in Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. He said there, Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. It means that each day has trouble of its own. So it doesn't matter if we're from a victory or if something really great just happened. Every day, there's just trouble in the world, in our lives. Now, I'm not being pessimistic. I'm not saying that, you know, okay, uh, well, Jesus said this, the Bible said this, now we can just expect um, bad things to happen every day in our lives. No, I'm just saying that the possibility is always there. And if it's there, are we just to gripe and complain, just feel sorry for ourselves? But Jesus, in the, the Word of God, already gave us a warning about these things. So that we could be ready. Again, going back to John 16, 33, Jesus said, You know what? These things have I spoken unto you, that ye might have peace. You know, you can still have peace. In this world, there will be trouble, but I have overcome the world. So yes, you can expect trouble, but don't just expect the trouble. Expect me with the trouble, and I'm greater than your troubles. So, good things today are not an assurance of good things tomorrow. While 2019 just um, seemed to be um, a kickoff for the greater 2020, everything was just um, turned upside down and all of those tragedies happened all over the world. But again, the Bible already warned us about those things. Number two, things to know about grace because the Lord gives us grace and we, we are alive and everything that uh, happens in our lives, all of the sustenance, everything is because of God's grace. But, you know, grace um, may not necessarily be um, what we always expect it to be. Now, here are just some um, things to note about grace. Letter A, grace is not immunity to the troubles of this world. Because sometimes think, okay, now I'm saved, now I'm of the Lord, and I am His. So now maybe my life would be free from trouble. Not necessarily. Well, we, we were, we're oriented to grace. We know about the grace of God. So maybe then uh, we can be um, immune to all of these um, inconveniences in the world. Not necessarily. In First Peter 5, 7-10, it says there, Casting all your cares 
all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns once and for all on Him. For He cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. Now, if there are not troubles in this world, don't we think that um, the Lord wouldn't have put this passage in the Bible? But if we are encouraged to cast all our cares on the Lord, then that means that there will be trouble, there will be difficulties, there will be challenges in life. Continuing, be sober, well-balanced, and self-disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times. That The enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. But resist him. Be firm in your faith against his attack, rooted, established, and movable, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being experienced by your brothers and sisters throughout the world. So it's not just us. Now again, trouble may come directly, as the passage has said, from the devil, from the enemy. It may be self-induced. <laughs> it may not necessarily come directly from the devil. Maybe a result of the, all the evil of this world because this is the devil's world and this is a fallen world. But there will be trouble and everyone is suffering. It's not just us. You do not suffer alone. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who imparts his blessing and favor who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ, will himself complete, confirm, strengthen, and establish you, making you what you ought to be. If you noticed, the passage did not say, after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace will just magically make it all disappear. No. It says there that he will just give us strength and establish, establish us that we may continue living and enduring the suffering. It's not necessarily something that takes away the inconveniences and the difficulties of life. But it says that the God of all grace, who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ, will himself complete, confirm, strengthen, and establish you, making you what you ought to be. Now we will uh, touch on that principle later making you what you ought to be because sometimes the sufferings in life are allowed by the Lord for a special purpose letter B grace is the strength to endure suffering it's not immunity to the troubles of this world but grace is the strength to endure suffering 2 Corinthians 7 uh, 12 7 to 10 it's a very familiar passage but let's still read it this was the apostle paul speaking and lest i should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations there was given to me a thorn in the flesh because the apostle paul was just given revelation by the lord about uh his purpose and his plan and every many things that uh we do not even um we will or we cannot even comprehend so there was given to me a thorn in the flesh the messenger of satan to buffet me lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, or most gladly therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong, because the grace of God sustains him, or sustained him at that time. So, grace is the strength to endure suffering. It may also come in the form of suffering to protect us from sin of pride that leads to many great evils. In verse 7, it says there, because the, the, the suffering had a purpose, and lest I should be exalted above measure, lest he should be proud, the Apostle Paul said. And the purpose was to protect him. That's why the suffering was also God's grace for him. It had a purpose to protect him. And sometimes sufferings come our way because the Lord has a purpose for it, for us. And let us see. Grace does not eliminate difficulties. It is help in time of need. Now, there's a difference from something that eliminates to something that helps. 
In Hebrews 4.16, it says there, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. It's something that helps us. Uh, it's not necessarily spoon feeding, but something that helps us get up and face the challenges of life. And letter D, God's grace is abundant. In 2 Corinthians 9.8, something to understand about the grace of God. It says there, And God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing, come in abundance to you, so that you may always, under all circumstances, regardless of the need, have complete sufficiency in everything, being completely self-sufficient in Him, not in ourselves, but in Him, and have an abundance for every good work and act of charity. Now, sometimes grace is not necessarily, you know, just wealth and possessions. Grace can come in various forms. It can come in the form of friends, family, you know, um, or things that we do not expect, but just come our way to help us in time of need. And grace, when God gives us grace and gives us sufficiency in all things and blesses us with the greater things or many things in life it's not necessarily so that we can just have plenty for our own it's something that he wants us to channel to others as well so we may not have wealth or possessions but you may be having an impact in the lives of others for jesus christ at this time or even the time of uh of difficulties even last year despite the many difficulties that we had to face you were abundant God's grace was given to you and you have been given abundance to share with others so grace is not something that just takes away all of the inconveniences and difficulties in life it's something that sustains us and helps us to endure and overcome and eventually makes us stronger if we're going to be going to use an illustration, it's not grace is not, not like when you're trying to ride a bike. Grace is not someone who would drive the bike for you and just um, make you hop on. Grace would be the training wheels on the bike to help you learn to drive the bike or to ride the bike. So it's it's something like that. Now number three, God's grace always comes through now let's go back to our passage in the book of exodus chapter 15. well good things today number one are not necessarily an assurance of good things tomorrow and then as we have learned that grace is not necessarily what we expect always to just magically uh, take out difficulties in our lives but one thing that we can be sure of to expect from god's grace is that god's grace will always come through Let's continue the passage in verse 25. Then he cried to the Lord, this was Moses, after the people had complained against him. He cried to the Lord for help, and the Lord showed him a tree, a branch of which he threw into the waters, and the waters became sweet. There the Lord made a statute and ordinance for them, and there he tested them, saying, If you will diligently listen and pay attention to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight and listen to his commandments and keep foremost in your thoughts and actively obey all his precepts and statutes then i will not put on you any of the diseases which i have put on the egyptians for i am the lord who heals you even before they went there even before they got there when they found no water and ended up in the waters of mara the lord already had a plan to give them drink God's grace always comes through in our lives letter A so it didn't just come through the grace of God is not limited by our unbelief that's something that we have understand whether we believe or trust God or not God's grace will not be limited in Exodus 15 27 let's read the last verse of the passage now, after, after they have complained, God gave them grace, God gave them water to drink. 
he turned the bitter water to be sweet. And he told them that, you know what? I am the Lord who heals you. You can trust in me. But he did not stop there. In verse 27, Then the children of Israel came to Elim, where there were twelve springs of water and seventy date palms. And they camped there beside the waters. So God did, just, did not just give them drink, but he also led them to a place where there was an abundance of water. I forgot, uh, 12 springs of water, that's a lot. One moment they were complaining, but the next moment, God led them to a place that would drown them and all of their complaints. So, God gave them grace, and God gave them more than what they needed. And that would be, grace is found in the eyes of God. In Genesis 6, verse 8, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Grace is not something we deserve, nor something that we can earn. I heard one preacher say, say this before, in one uh, while I was um, watching um, teaching online. Grace is found in the eyes of God. It's something that we will find if we come closer to the Lord. Now, God gives everyone. It's because of God's grace that even the world is sustained. But you know what? If you want to find the grace to help in time of need, we'll find it in the eyes of God. And it's not something that we will find away from the Lord. We'll have to be near Him to find that kind of grace. So, the grace of God is not limited by our unbelief. And God's grace is found in the eyes of the Lord. It always comes through for us. Now, before we conclude, I just like to share something that um just struck me. You know, while I was studying this lesson, I remembered uh, my nephew, my two-year-old nephew, when he was telling the story of the creation account. And he just said some very interesting things there that um, I saw to be so profound. Now, I'm not saying he's some sort of prophet or sage, you know, it would be great, great if he was, but um, I mean, it's just that there's just something in the words that he used that gave a different meaning and um, a different application for this lesson that we have. It went like this. This is how he said it. And you know the, the creation account. It's just um, limited to Genesis chapter 1 and 2, uh, chapter 1 uh, verses 1 to 2 to 3 at most. So this is how he said it. In the beginning, it's empty. It's darky. You know, it's dark. You know, the Bible went, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. So, that's how he said it. In the beginning, it's empty. There's nothing. It's darky. It was dark. And in the Bible, it says there that, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. But this is how he said it. This is how he said that part. In the beginning, it's empty. It's dark. God was there. God was there. You know, it's empty. It's dark. But God was there. And that made a world of difference. Wasn't the world kind of dark last year? Wasn't the hearts of people kind of empty last year? Especially those without Christ. And even some of us kind of wavered a little with everything that was happening. But God was here. 
and the implication of it is just so powerful it may be empty it may be dark but god is here and he didn't stop there you know he also said a phrase or a sentence that um, it's not necessarily in the passage i'm gonna say it again he said in the beginning it's empty it's darky god was there he had a plan now you won't find that in the creation account that the bible says he has a plan but um if you read the entire account completely then you will find out yes he did have a plan for creation but putting it here at this point just gives a different perspective you know it's empty it's dark but god was there and he has a plan 2020 was marked mostly by difficulties i mean we know that the god still delivered it he showed himself powerful in the lives of many people but mostly if you just generalize it 2020 you know was kind of like a tragedy but god was there he, he was still there and he had a plan and what can we say about the plans of god in jeremiah 29 11 a familiar passage for i know the thoughts that i have that i think toward you says the lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end those are the plans of the lord peace and an expected end something for our welfare he was still there and he had a plan despite the many things that we do not understand even if things did not make sense god was there and he had a plan i'm gonna finish up how he ended his story i'm gonna start from the beginning it's just a short uh, account that he gave in the beginning it's empty it's darky god was there he had a plan let there be light god's plan was to give light in an empty and dark world what do you think God's plan was for us in 2020 as we enter 2021? You see, God is the Father of lights. Jesus is the light of the world. And the Holy Spirit reveals the light of God's word. The lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. And that is our hope. That is the grace of God conclude god gives more grace to sustain us in difficult times and situations than in bestowing blessings to everyone you know blessing us is the easy part for the lord i'm not saying that god has uh, any difficulty with anything the bible says nothing's too difficult for the lord but if you're just gonna compare you know sustaining us that we might not lose our mind lose our way and just to make sure that we are kept and sustained in difficulties that would get, take more grace from the lord than just to bless us with wealth and possessions in our lives and if we saw the grace of our lord from that perspective then we can confidently say god's grace was truly plenty over and beyond in 2020 shall we pray our father in heaven we thank you for giving us more grace thank you for getting us through year 2020 and thank you because your grace does not fail father i pray that you'd help us to continue walking with you trusting you seeking your blessing in our lives instead of our own agenda seeking to live in your plan and in your will father i pray that you will grant us the wisdom to continue walking with you and to continue living our lives as we start this new year thank you for your grace once again and your faithfulness in our lives and all of this we pray in jesus name amen
Thank you very much for your time. And may you join us again next time as we hear from God's Word.